The third person is Amanda. Amanda Crook. And if you give her a big round of applause. There we are, Amanda. I bumped into Amanda and her husband Mark at the coffee shop yesterday, which is not surprising. I might buy a bucket somewhere in the coffee shop because I'm not in coffee shops. And I said to Mark, are you coming to church tomorrow morning? And Speaking, and he could come kind of giggle at me and chortle, you know. And I said, What? Well, it would make you nervous. He said, No, I would make you nervous. <laughs> so here we are. And uh, Amanda, it's great to have you here. And uh, the first question, you know, because you got this little cheat sheet, how would you describe your faith journey from the moment you made a commitment to Christ until today uh, in terms of uh, consistency, commitment? Uh, the stages of growth and all those kind of things, how would you describe that? Um, I think if I had to describe it in one word, it would be erratic. Um, my, my faith journey has definitely been erratic. It began as a child and I sort of lost the plot for several years as a teenager and a young person. Um, I really rededicated my life here back in Maldives some two and a half years ago. Um, and when I think about what my journey has been like, I often um, really compare it to a hamster in one of those perspex balls. You know when you get the hamster out of the cage and you can put them into a ball and they can run around? Um, and if you put them going downhill, they actually struggle to keep, keep the pace up. <laughs> um, and their legs won't quite go fast enough. And that's how I often feel when God's um, really growing me and really working in my life. I often actually feel like I really can't quite keep up with him. And at other times, um, when like Hans is trying to go uphill, I really struggle, um, you know, thinking, God, where are you? I'm trying to really overcome something here. Um, and at times it does just feel like it's far away. But um, I think just remembering that that perspex ball that's around the hamster is really like God's love. Um, and it's just all around, all around me, protecting me all the time. Fantastic, fantastic. So he is. Now, now Amanda, uh, you made a speech like that back in your, in your much younger days, and uh, you got baptized as a believer here in this church on the 18th of April. And uh, what, what, what sort of made it be that moment for you that you should get baptized then? Um, I sort of um, got a big problem, I guess, on baptism for some months. Um, um, and I was quite sure that actually I knew what I needed to do, and that was nothing. thing from God had actually got it wrong. <laughs> um, but the prompting got sort of stronger and stronger to the point that I, I couldn't even read the word baptism, I couldn't even see a baptism, I couldn't um, hear about baptism without really feeling God hit me over the head, sort of, and say, you know, you need to do this. Um, and I still thought, yeah, that's okay, I have plenty of time, I can do it in the future. And then the One Month to Live campaign started to be introduced, so before we even began the campaign, just the sort of, you know, we we're going to do it. And I suddenly realised that if I was going to be, um, if I'd only got one month to live, and I was going to be stood before God um, at the end of that month, and he said to me, why didn't you get baptised? I told you to. What was I going to say? I sort of hadn't really quite got a very good excuse. Um, and so, um, yeah, I thought I'd better do it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so the one month to live campaign kind of Bowled you over before we even started, just because we've been promoting it. Right? Yeah. Then we did the first Sunday, and then God then got, got hit again. <laughs> <laughs> so what got hit with that time? Um, really, just um, I felt that I really needed to get my priorities back right, that I needed to get my priorities of my work life, my home life, my family, um, the time that I was able to spend with God, just really back in balance, that things had got a little bit out of control. Um, and so I decided that the only way to do that was to actually reduce my working hours um, and to have one day off a week, which sounds quite simple. Um, but when you've got um, a CEO like I have, um, I didn't really expect it to be very simple. But um, I made that decision on the Sunday that I would try and have one day off a week. And on the Monday morning, lo and behold, within five minutes of being in the office, the CEO would call me into, um, into his office to actually discuss where I saw myself in the company in the next financial year. So I hit him with a reduction in work hours and um, came out having reduced my, uh, reduced my hours. Um, and that's really enabled me just to prioritise my time when the kids are at home to do stuff with them rather than rushing around and saying, I need to get the cleaning done or I need to you know, do whatever it is. And I can sit down and I can read a story and just get my priorities back. Right. 
fantastic. Now we're coming to the conclusion of this campaign and where to from here for you with regard to challenges from a one month to live? Um, I think really just to protect that margin that I've got back in my life. Mm -hmm. So um, Isn't that a good word? Mark? It is, yeah. yeah well, everyone say margin. Uh, <laughs> there we go. So I've got some I've got some time back, I've got some margin back, I've got some me time, um, and I've got some time to get everything else done. Um, and to protect that, I'm gonna be very, very protective of it. Um, I'm really um, just make sure that I don't lose it again. Alrighty, now as I say, we're coming to the end of the day. We're going to celebrate with lots of fine food after the service uh, put on by the, uh, the new uh, hospitality and catering connect group. Uh, but there are folks here, they're still processing what we've been challenged with with One Month Live campaign. How would you encourage or even challenge these folks to take hold of the stuff we've done here in the player? I think just do it. Um, much as at times it seems scary, um, if God's asking you to do something, do it. Unless you want to be stuck there giving your explanation, um, <laughs> um, then just do it. And just really try and get our priorities right. And I think really just to um, keep it fresh in our minds. It's no good now just going one month till it's finished and we can go back to living how we were living. Um, to keep it fresh because what, what you need to do now is going to be different to what you need to do in one month, two months, five years, ten years. So, to keep that principle going. Excellent. Amanda, thank you so much for sharing with us. Now, if you would turn that off, give it to Uncle Steve here, that's Cousin Steve, and give Amanda a very good <laughs>